Okay? We're going to be starting in two minutes. So if you'd like to find your seat so long, please. Thank you. Cousin Marily. Good, thanks. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're well. Good to have you here, and good to have those joining us online. Welcome to you, and welcome to our guests. Uh, if you're here for the first time, you're welcome to have a cappuccino on us. Coffee shop's my back, back right over there, so please make your way there after the service, and you can grab yourself a free cappuccino. So welcome, and it's also nice to have some out-of-towners here uh, that are joining us for the pastoral intensive this week, training. So we've got uh, Zolani from KZN. Zolani, welcome. And Landa from the West Coast, good to have you. And Stephen and Leandri from Centurion, good to have you guys here. And uh, yeah, Alpha Online is starting this week as well, Thursday night. Uh, I think they started last week, but it's you're welcome to join uh, starting this week, Thursday. That'll be for 10 weeks. Uh, consecutive weeks starting from 7 p.m. until 8.30, and that'll be happening online on Zoom. So chat to David Skevington if you're interested in joining up and if you'd like to lead as well, help facilitate a group, please chat to him. Kids Zone is starting again on Friday, and that'll be from 5 to 6. That's kids from grade 1 to grade 7, and they can choose either from, for, from three different options there, sports, hip-hop, dance, and art. So what's actually hip-hop dance and art. And then late harvesters, the over 60s, uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday will be the first tea of the month, and that'll be from 10 to 12 here at Fountain. And then very exciting, on Friday night, we've got the beginning of the Healthy Sexuality Conference, and that'll be starting uh, Friday night, Saturday morning. We're going to have uh, an interactive evening Sunday, uh, Saturday evening as well. And Sunday morning, Alexander will be with us for our Sunday morning service. So please sign up for that. Uh, it's going to be really, really good. And then the men's breakfast will be happening on the 15th of May here at Fountain. We'll be opening the coffee shop. We'll be having a bring and squattle. So it would be lovely to have the guys joining us. And that's from 8 to 10 on Saturday the 15th. And then the East Wing, um, how exciting it is to see the the roof trusses on and some tiles, roof tiles going on. So we have raised just over 551,000 so far towards our budget, and we need just over 1.5 million towards that. So uh, if you'd like to give towards that, please mark it for either East Wing or Building Project. And uh, we appreciate everyone who has been doing so. And just a reminder to wear your masks during the service, and especially when you're praying for someone. Uh, and then our offering this evening will be going towards uh, missions and mercy. So the baskets are up front. So as we start worship this evening, uh, we, you're welcome just to come down and give towards that. Yeah, so thanks for joining us. And we're looking forward to having a, like a double-barrel shotgun tonight. We've got Dave and Vota sharing together. So we, we're looking forward to that. Dave and Vota, would you like to... Make your way up here. Thank you. Oh, can we just stretch out our hands and pray for them? 
Lord, we thank you for Dave and Vota. Thank you for this, this interactive evening tonight, Lord. We, we're so excited, anticipate the discussion, Lord, of this new humanity and what it means for us, Lord. So would you speak to us? Would you use them, Lord, uh, in this time to just speak to every heart of, of those here and those online and those that will listen during the week as well, Lord? We just pray for a, a powerful time together. In Jesus' name, amen. I thought David had been raptured there for a moment. Just. <laughs> thanks, guys. It's great to be with you all. And uh, thanks for letting us do something a little different tonight. <clears throat> Both and I had a friendship that goes back uh, a number of years. And uh, we've all been on a journey, as you all are. Huh? We're learning things, we're discovering things, and... Uh, I think we, we've had a, the privilege of uh, dialoguing in very robust conversations from uh, extremely different points of view on a number of different things. But during lockdown, um, are you managing it, Butch? <laughs> there you go. They're almost uh, derobe to get these. Sorry about yeah, that, Vita. It's okay, my man. You're okay. Don't worry. Go on, right way. First, and I could calm down. And no, we we should on what are we talking about? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we we've had some robust conversations over over quite a while, and it's been a, a real blessing for us to let iron shop and iron, as the scripture says, you know. Um, and so we just want to encourage people to. We thought we'd just let our conversation spill over here tonight, and just encourage people to uh, uh, engage. Um, with what we call robust self-talk, soul talk. And uh, yeah, so, we, and we, we, we know we haven't, uh, we haven't, it's not like a, a scripted conversation, it's, it's live, if I can put it that way to you. <laughs> and we, we're going to touch maybe, maybe some of the themes that um, have been uh, challenging for us and maybe we've moved a bit. But I think uh, the one thing that, that we both agree on, during, during lockdown, which is now in its second year already, um, we find ourselves both using the same phrase um, uh, and, and with quite a level of passion and commitment that uh, God was developing a new humanity during this time. Mm -hmm. So I voted, what did, let me sit like this so we can see each other because as we yeah. like talking sideways, you guys okay with your view there, Gav? Good. Gav, thanks for doing what you do, eh? Appreciate you more, brother. Yeah, but uh, um, what, what do you see in this new humanity thing? How does it work for you? What does it look like? I think the first thing is this new humanity is not just about me and you yeah. sitting here, but it's about us. So for me, this I'm very excited about being part of this talk. But I want to encourage you, you guys that there, to be really intentional. Um, even if you don't say, but just be aware of where the Holy Spirit is leading you and where He actually wants you to actually um, respond to this. So, yeah, I just want to throw it out there. For me, Dave, the, um, I've been, for many years, I've been a little bit um, dissatisfied with humanity in general. And I remember in it was in 2010 where um, I um, was on a weekend with you guys at the foot of the Coxcoe Mountains. Mm. And that night as we were worshipping, I, I, I just couldn't connect with this, what's happening. And I went out and it was a beautiful evening. And I said to God, tonight I'm throwing out everything. Everything that I've learned. I grew up in, in, a, in a strong Pentecostal um, um, environment environment that shaped me and um, good as well. I'm not mm. being, trying to be negative about it, but yeah. that night I said, I'm throwing everything out. Everything that I've learned, I'm just going to hold on to Jesus, mm. which helped me because when me and you got together and I said to you, you know, we had so many differences and you said to me, oh, can we agree on one thing? Can we agree on Jesus? Mm -hmm. He's, uh, I, said, yeah. I said, yeah, we can do this. And our friendship has grown from that, mm -hmm. from that one point. But it was interesting. I, um, 
since 2010, um, when I made a decision, it was as if God took me seriously and we, um, I've been walking a road of actually letting go, getting rid of things that are just, um, um, getting rid of religion. Mm. That's mm. what I wanted to, you know, mm. throwing it all out. Mm. And it's been 11 years. And the last time that I preached here, when you introduced me um, mm. before you said something, that at that point it didn't make an impact to me, but as I was afterwards, you said to me, there's no religious bone in his body. Mm. And I thought that period is now done, you know. Um, I don't have to mm. throw things off. It's now where I am now, I'm going yeah. forward. And it, it was towards the end of this process of me letting go and, and throwing out stuff that to me was religion, um, that I, as I was throwing off, there was just a deeper, deeper passion for, for what I'm busy with, you know, and Jesus, and the teachings of Jesus, and the, just the way he was living his day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And I wanted to actually experience on this side of the earth, of, on this side of, of, of the grave, what it is like. Yes. What it is like when these things, when the teachings of Jesus actually on a day-to-day -day basis are being practiced, you know. And Jesus was an upside-down guy, you know. It wasn't, you know, uh, he, he was counter-culture. Uh, so, yeah, so for me, the new humanity is about that, you know. It's just so it's not really new humanity as such as it started with Jesus, mm -hmm. but it's just for us in our, in my generation, my time, the, the amount of years that I've got left on this earth is how do I actually practice it yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis that what Jesus was preaching was not just pie in the sky, but it was really yeah. real life things. And I mean, in, in, in part of your journey, as I recall, as especially the earlier seasons, uh, we were so aware of the uh, different viewpoints we were carrying like on, on authority of scripture in our lives, uh, yeah. on our view on different ethical issues uh, and how do we respond to that. Um, LGBTQ stuff was coming up for us and, and you were making a plea for a position that I couldn't go with. Yeah. And we had to grapple with that and just say, well, where do we land? And what is this, uh, what is this new humanity meant to be like with regard to all these ethical questions? Um, I mean, I, and I was also challenged because I, I continue to be challenged by... Uh, you, you would be in the school of James, the mm. book of James, who, who's, uh, who says that you say that you're saved by faith, but I, we see that you're saved by works. Mm. Your faith is expressed through the works. That's not to say that works save us, but that demonstrate that we do believe. And, um, and, and so you had a, a strong passion for, for visible faith yes. uh, rather than just some kind of uh, you know, intellectual ascent towards Christ. So for you, this new humanity has been very much around that. And yeah. I've seen you shift a bit too, because at one time you even questioned whether there was a place like hell. Uh, and people, if God is a God of love, how, how would he cope with that? Some people being internally separated. And yet you've also come to see, as I think, you can tell me if I've misunderstood you, that um, if love is love, it requires choice. Mm. And if God is love, um, then he, he doesn't force his will on us. He invites us. He leads us by inspiration, not obligation. And that's been a, that's been a challenge, Sh shifting on that. And, and with that, the understanding of Scripture as, um, as being trustworthy, and you can actually lean on it, not yeah. in some kind of proof text way, but as a, a menu that will lead you to a good meal. What do you think? I think we will still have many great conversations around that. <laughs> Um, I think that's what I value about our friendship is exactly that. I remember when, when you asked me to, become, to come on leadership and, and, and I said to you uh, that night, I said to you, I cannot be because I, we have differences on the whole issue of homosexuality. Mm. And you just said to me, you know, can we agree on Jesus? So for me, that, the, the trust that you gave to me, in spite of the fact that we had differences of opinion, uh, um, that you, we can actually put that aside and just focus on the core issue of Jesus. And as I, over the years, as I have been working with that stuff, and we had many conversations, and and then even when I go, go home, I have more conversations with you in my head, mm -hmm. you know, which is probably a little bit less um, kind, you know. <laughs> but you call him your name, <laughs> <in your head. laughs> but what I what I what I or value is also that space that you've given me, and so many people that space to grow because. In the end, it is not about that issue. You know, that's one of the issues. But during that time, you know, 
I managed to grow mm. in my own spiritual life. And, and, and I believe for everyone else, you know, that we are here, that we can have that space to grow, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy and to be on this on this bus, yeah. you know, this bus. We use the bus. I remember, I don't know, guys that maybe be in VNV, um, we use that um, that um, analogy of the bus driver. And I want to be on this bus and and but be more intentional about what is my role on 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 this bus. I I was as I was showering tonight. I was thinking about the, the Michael Collins. He was the astronaut. Mm. On Apollo 11, he passed away last week, and I watched the interview with him on um, on BBC. And he was the guy that did not land; he didn't set step foot on a moon. His role was specifically to actually stay back behind and organise. And he had such so many different scenarios of if this happens, this is how he's going to handle that. And, and there was a great fear, or, or, or even a great reality, that he might lose those two guys on the moon, and he's going to return back to Earth. You know, and there's obviously certain protocol he's got to follow, but he was—he he knew exactly what he had to do. And I was thinking about the the analogy of the bus. And mm. Wouldn't it be nice if the bus is not full of passengers, but full of astronauts? <laughs> you know, that every one of us knows what we're doing. We've got yeah. a specific task. Yeah. Just makes so much easier the the role of the bus yeah. driver, mm. because he's got a vision. He's driving somewhere, but he knows behind him. Mm. You know. People know what they're supposed to do because it's not just about tonight, is it? I mean, it's always about Monday morning, yeah, yeah. you know, and about how we actually, whatever we do here, how does it play out in, in, in the real, and how do we build this kingdom, yeah. you know? But I think just to come back to, I know, but, you know, what I've appreciated about Vineyard over the years for me, and, and Jackie as well, is just this freedom that we can actually have these conversations. Mm -hmm. We can have, and that's not about, mm -hmm. it's not about that, it's about, it's about Jesus in yeah. the end, you know? Not about telling some kind of party line, but uh, having yeah. the differences uh, yeah. as we pursue him. Um, I know one of the things that you, you often challenge me on say, here you go again, uh, naming LGBTQ uh, gay issues as the focus. What about all the other sexual sins that, that I, and you used to say, that I know are in your congregation? <laughs> so, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and I kept saying to you, Vada, it's, uh, it's not just one thing, it's all... Um, Illicit sexuality, and that's why we're having this conference. Are you, are you coming to the conference? Yo, Dave, um, <laughs> I'm really concerned. <laughs> Pretty on the spot, I, my I, brother. I, must, I, I mean, I've really, I mean, I got to um, learn or know Alexander Fent a little bit in the recent on mm. some of his podcasts. So mm. I, I um, yeah. <laughs> you think about it. Yeah. yeah. But, but it is, you know, I'm, I've been passionate my life, you know, um, in the church, you know, is the reality is that so many people are struggling yeah. on, on, on the, you know, around sexuality and yeah. I, um, you know, yeah, it'll be a, open up a whole new yeah, thing if yeah, we start okay. talking about that. But I think for me, it's just is so great to see some of my gay brothers and sisters mm. with us and we, we mm. can, um, oh, absolutely, we can just worship the same God, yeah. and we can also be both all active in the kingdom, yeah, yeah. and as I deal with my stuff, and, and we all deal with our stuff, I mean, that to me is, is great. Mm -hmm. If that wasn't there, I would not be here anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. But you've, um, you've been more supportive of us actually taking the, the line and uh, holding the flag out of hope, of healing, and deliverance for people. Uh, of whatever broken sexuality has been, I, I know that you've walked along with a number of people in this area, so I think that's uh, we're grateful for that. But our view, as you know, has been welcoming, not affirming. Yeah. So uh, sometimes just because we say not affirming, it's, a, it's assumed that we're judging or we're writing off or condemning. Not at all. It's yeah. actually holding out hope because there is a way for change and there is a, a gospel that can affect lives. Um, so that, that's a thing we've talked about many times. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you spoke. You spoke about you know um, speaking truth in love. You know? yeah, yeah. And I think for for you, obviously, as being the leader of the movement, it's important. I mean, I've got a company with um, many people that works under me. I, there's sometimes that I've got to take stand up and 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 make a mm -hmm. make a decision. You know, um, where I do it, and I can do it in love, but I've got to make a decision. The mm -hmm. same with you. Mm -hmm. You got to. Um, make certain decisions and you then trust that you speak that yeah. truth in love. 
Mm. Obviously, for me, being an ordinary member of the congregation, I don't feel that I need to speak. I just need to speak love. Mm. I just need to speak the love and, tr and, and, and hope that the Holy Spirit will do the conviction will of the truth. Will bring about the conviction. And he often, often does. Um, but it doesn't mean that we uh, should shy away from doing the Nathan thing sometimes with, as David had with, with Nathan after his Bathsheba saga. Yeah. It, it was because Nathan cared about him that he actually gave him a, a story. He, he confronted him with a parable because yeah. it helped uh, to put the message over in a way that could be and was received by David and said, it is, it is me. Yeah. This is true. I, you are the man, you know. Yeah. So that's an important thing. Is It's, it's a grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ, John 1 says. Eh? Yeah. So we've agreed on that. The other thing I think we've talked about, especially in recent weeks, is that, that phrase that um, Hans Kung, a Catholic theologian, talks about, about um, the gospel being the essence of the church. This is what, we, what nourishes us. And the form... Um, um, being that application of that, so that the essence never changes, but the form will always be adapting. Um, and, and I think you've challenged us about that, and uh, about how to, to keep adapting the form, to make sure that we don't compromise the essence because we are rigid about the form in some way or other. Eh? Yeah. Um, you had an experience of your dad in, in terms of some of these things as well. What, tell me about your experience with your dad. How did he influence you? I remember when I was um, probably about 10 years old, I, um, I said I want to be like my dad. He was my hero. Mm. And I think when I was about 20 years old, I said, I don't want to be like my dad. <laughs> He's not my hero <laughs> anymore because I've learned things about him. And then I got to the point one day where I looked at him and said, what is the good in, you know, in my dad? Mm. And then we had a... We had an interesting relationship. I remember um, 2010 was a profound year for me. You know, that was the year that my dad passed away. That is the year that I threw out religion. Mm. Um, it was just a lot of things. It was a year that actually I, I um, hit my midlife mm. crisis. Um, I resigned from my, my partnership. I walked in his office. My partner didn't know what was going on. But all those things, God used it. It's amazing that he used those things. And I, I'm very strong um, um, believer in the two halves of life mm. that, you know that and I think many of many of us if we, we are here we are in different places you know you're either playing your first half or you're playing mm. your second half and that's those are very important things and when you're young it's a natural thing that you're actually acquiring it's a family's business it's lots of things but there comes a time where you um, starting to let go mm. and 2010 was for me that time where I had to where I went in the change room of life, mm. you know, and I, um, and, um, I had to relook re at my game plan, and I thought I was out of it, but I didn't realize, looking back now, that I was 11 years in a change room, mm. Mm. working out how long sure. to play the second half. Uh, obviously, the Holy Spirit of God was not too anxious of me spending a lot of time in a change room, but this is the thing about second half. You know, if, if, you, if you have the analogy of, of, a, of a sports match, that you can, you know, if you reach the halfway and you get into change and you've played the full mm. first half mm. but look you're not gonna you know at some point on the second half you're gonna be taken yeah. off the pitch you know yeah. and the coach can take you off any time so it becomes so much more valuable mm. you know and that's why for me it's so much important to be intentional of what I do yeah. you know intentional this, tonight to me is an intentional thing it's not just about me and you mm. it's about us connecting yeah. each other and and you know, there's the one thing is the union of God, but it's the communion, you know, and I've just, yeah. and this is another thing that, that Vinyan has taught me is there's a value <clears throat> of community, mm. you know, because we are, um, you know, I, I know half the people are not here, but we are to connect it mm. because of our connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the, with my dad, um, when he passed away, he, just before he passed away, he had a dream. And he was carrying, um, he, the, the dream took him through his whole life. And he had a briefcase with two folders in right towards the end, which God said to him in the dream, or the person in the dream, which was, the, I think it was, the Holy, it was a woman that was acting as the Holy Spirit, said, you can put down that, you know, you've done your thing. And those two things were unity and healing, mm. the two things that he, um, that he, that was passion mm. his whole life. Um, and I, 
I was asking you earlier, and I wonder if, if, if my role is now my second half is to actually pick up those two followers mm. and walk, or is there two different things mm. for God? For me, yeah. I'm very passionate about unity. I've always been part of the unit. Mm. For me, that's, that's very important. Mm. And even in a time that we had our differences, to me, it's more valuable to have mm. unity, you know. I don't want to start another church called, yeah, yeah. you know, Voters Congregation just yeah. because we can't agree on, on something, you know. I want to, I want to, and I'm, I'm passionate. A lot of my friends have left the church, the, 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 the institutionalized church, mm. because they just got disillusioned. I just found this so much, because I still believe the church, mm. such a, I think Gavin mentioned this morning, the value of the church in the kingdom, you know, mm. you know, the role of that. So I know of, I go off tangents, but my dad has played a, a big role, and I think, in, in my, this where I'm now, I'm, I, I want to start looking at his readings and his writings mm. and see where I can actually cool. use that. You know? I mean, isn't it the work of the Spirit too? He teaches us to, to know, he's called the promise of the Father, and he teaches us to know the heart of the Father. So I'm not surprised that the Lord is using something of your dad and the yeah. legacy that you uh, were impacted on from him um, today as you open your life increasingly to the Holy Spirit. Maybe in a moment you can tell me your experience of the Spirit, but, and we could share that. And, and I know here, me and you guys, eh, Morley, and a bunch of you had very recent and very, very dynamic experience of the Spirit, haven't you? Eh? Show me how many of you in the last year have had a significant move of the Spirit in your life. How many of you have? Look at that. All over this place, eh? And, uh, I mean, Dave Skev, you guys, with the search thing happening on Wednesdays, there's been a very strong move of the Spirit. So let's just talk about that a little bit. What, yeah. what does the Spirit do for us? Because I know um, sometimes, you know, back in Pentecostalism, um, the, when Azusa Street, 1905, uh, Spirit was poured out, and uh, what was given as life, we, we quickly, as, as is our human tendency often, we make a religion of it, and then that becomes the only way that you can have, uh, receive the Spirit. And he's, he, he's like the wind, Jesus said. He blows where he wills. Yeah. And he requires of us to just be open and yielding to him uh, in order to receive. You don't need all... Uh, strange forms in order for that to happen. So the, the forms need to change to constantly be focusing because he will always, as Jesus said in, in John 16, he'll take what is mine and give it, show it to you. He's constantly um, wanting to bring us what Jesus carried. And Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So Jesus came to show us the heart of the Father. And that is the ongoing work of the Spirit in our lives. Um, I've always been... I've been... I've been enabled by the Spirit, as opposed to um, um, very resistant to the gimmicks that have often accompanied the experience of the Spirit. Mm. Um, we don't want to fall foul of this. We, this holy, he's called the Holy Spirit. Um, and you don't need to... I've heard horror stories of people being manipulated to speak in tongues or... Uh, follow through on some kind of manifestation. That's not really the issue. The issue, does he lead you to know the heart of the Father better? Eh? Mm. That's really where, where the rub hits the road. Um, how do, what's your experience of the Holy Spirit? What happened for you? Tell us about that. Oh, sure. I, I grew up in, in the Pentecostal mm. um, yeah. movement, um, so it was very much part of our daily mm. church life. Not so much Monday to Friday, but mm. when you had the church, mm. things were happening, you know. And um, I remember I was, um, I spoke in tongues when I was seven years old, mm. you know, and it was a real experience for me there. Mm. Um, but when I, in, you know, in 2010, when I threw out everything, I threw out um, the Holy Spirit mm. kind of with that, mm. you know, uh, in, and I'm trying to not be mm. authentic about it. Because... Yeah. Um, and, and I've realized, and, and when I was preaching the last time and afterwards, my friend Rory was, we were talking, and, and I realized that as I was so focused on Jesus, and it, but Jesus has almost become a philosophy, a way of life to me, mm. but it was Jesus, and how do I actually put Jesus into mm. practice? And Rory was challenging me of where is the Holy Spirit mm. in that? And it's for the first time it struck me that, and then I realized my time is over of throwing things out and getting them actually. So I'm, I'm excited, though, because p part of the thing, w and one of the things that I was, that me and you had, was, uh, had many discussions about, is the value of, of, of the written word of God. Yeah. And I was more, for me, it was about experience mm. and, and about the living word of God, what is just happening now. But to me, the, the, the Holy Scriptures is like this thing that I'm starting to now 
discover further, almost the first time. Yes. So the Holy Spirit for me is a new place where I'm actually now mm. starting again and using that. And you mentioned the other day that the Holy Spirit is a connector. Yeah, yeah. And I really like that. You the know. go between God. Remember yeah. that uh, J. Vincent Taylor book? Yeah. Yeah. And then also, you know, um, I f- want to go back to that early church and to that first probably 300 years, you know, and maybe even the first thousand years of Christianity, the people that lived there and, mm-hmm. and the experience and how they experienced the Holy Spirit. And, mm-hmm. and so I'm very excited about that. that. So, I'm, so I'm, I'm open to the Holy Spirit because I, what the power of the Holy Spirit is, I mean, you know, like he can instantly change situations. Mm-hmm. It's like a miracle, you know, like or whatever. So mm-hmm. those things were the things that I was fighting against. Mm-hmm. I want to now open myself to that and say, you know, Holy yeah. Spirit, will you teach me so I'm fresh? So I'm a beginner. Yeah, I'm no, a beginner. that's good. But I, if I look at Scripture and, and I look at our experience, and right here amongst you in search as well, I, I see that um, he comes and, and usually the, he shows himself in the most common manifestations is tongues. Yeah. And I was, I, I was 17 when I received baptism of the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And it was, it was very helpful for me, especially in my prayer life. Yeah. But the, the other manifestation is, is, is prophecy. And if you look in the book of Acts, every time the Spirit is poured out, it was tongues and or prophecy. Um, he always motivates us to speak for life, speak for intimacy with God and life for our fellow man. It's constantly the, the flow. Um, and, you know, it's not a command that uh, we, you have to speak in tongues, but you get to, yeah. you know. Uh, and, but he does encourage us in Scripture to seek to prophesy, uh, seek and pursue that which will bring life to others. So that's an important thing. But yeah, um, it's not just words we make up. The mm. Spirit is also the Spirit of truth who will lead us into all truth. Mm. And we've seen that over the years as God has led us and led church to uh, become more and more this new humanity that we started talking about earlier. Um, and as I look at that, I... I realize over church history, you know, the church sometimes learns things quite slowly. The first 1,800 years, um, the church still believed in slavery, for example. Mm. And then 200 years ago, thereabouts, um, the slavery was finally outlawed. And look, there's still, I think, 45 million people in slavery today. But it's outlawed globally, okay? Um, and then l- l- the last century was very much about uh, uh, debunking colonialism and dictatorships and things. And there was a massive shift on the planet so that God was, was realigning um, the authorities and, and uh, uh, mindsets of people. Right now, this is the century. I'm convinced the Holy Spirit is, is focusing on redeeming us from broken sexuality and, uh, and the, the, the things that lead to gender-based violence. Misogyny, for example, mm. the denigration of women who, are, uh, who uh, in historic Christianity were not perceived as being capable or blessed of God to lead. Um, and in our toxic hum- uh, masculinity, uh, the, the view was often imposed on women that they, there's no way they could lead. And yet they were mandated to manage this earth along with Adam from the get-go. Yeah. And that's been something, and I think we're finding ourselves shifting on more and more. We celebrate that, yeah, that there, there is no distinction. If God is on you to lead, the gift is there, regardless of gender. And I know this is not acceptable in many circles, and I want to say that because this message might be picked up by all kinds of people. Categorically, I believe that this is the time when God wants to say enough of all that leads to gender-based violence, misogyny, men abusing women, uh, women rising up in reactive, uh, fe- in reactive feminism, and, and, uh, and God wants us to lay down the sword between the sexes and find this new humanity that works in, in healthy commonality. Dave, how would, how would that play out in, in church environment? Uh, I, mean, how would, how, I mean, how would we do that? Um, and is it, I mean, is it the problem within the church or is it the problem in society that the church needs to stand up against or needs the church need to be healed as well of that? And if it's, you know, how do we here in Fountain of Venice, how do we yeah. practically live out that? Yeah, well, you know, it just makes me think of a saying, you know, the, the place of the, the ship is in the sea, but it's a problem when the sea is in the ship. Uh-huh. And we've got to keep thinking, how, how can we pioneer hope and demonstrate a new humanity for broken society? And so right here, we've got to get that right in, in total respect uh, for all that God is doing in people's lives, regardless of their 
gender distinctions. Yeah. So that's what we are seeking to do. So we, we don't take a look at the gender at all. We, we simply look at the life of Christ and what he's gifting this person to do. I mean, we've got Lunda here who's leading a church in the West Coast. And uh, what a blessing to have you share with us on this, this week, Lunda. Great to have you with us. Eh? Um, and uh, I know you had to walk through a bit of a storm on this score uh, when you took up leadership eh? after Maurits left. Um, and you managed, eh? Still alive. <laughs> well done, Lunda. We salute sure. you. Uh, so we've got people that are pioneering, yeah. uh, and it'll, it'll spark here and there. Um, not in a reactive way, just women trying to prove themselves. It's not about proving yourself. It's yeah. just letting Jesus in you shine through and being all that he's called you to be. Yeah. And what is the resistance against that then? Why would people, why would spirit-filled people resist that? Yeah. Or, or, or am I not touching on a very well, I difficult? think, again, it comes back to this thing where they're, they're more attached to the forms than the essence. Okay. And, and so they won't adjust the forms. Like the world, um, <laughs> there were always those that were opposed to slavery, yet the, the body of Christendom opposed it, opposed liberation uh-huh. until 200 years ago. You know? uh, there's just this resistance to, to rocking the boat in a way that, that uh, forces me to admit that I've been wrong. You know? yeah. and, and so now we have complementarianism that prevails in many churches and saying, well, no, we, women are needed, but they're in complementary relationship with the man always being the lead and all that. But maybe not. There's some situations in our, our life completely. Uh, if I didn't have Colleen leading me, I'd be in trouble. Uh-huh. I'd wear the wrong clothes for uh-huh. sure. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. So we, the complementarity is good. Um, and whoever is gifted to lead in a particular context should be free to lead. Yeah. And when we don't have that in our churches, that's a problem. Yeah. I, I think that uh, it's another thing. It's an indictment on masculinity that it is so afraid and so weak that it won't allow women to rise up. They're afraid of, the, of, of what could happen in that school. So we need to, uh, I think uh, there's toxic masculinity that prevails here too, that yeah. needs, needs to be repented of and healed. And it's, I say healed also because it's, it's locked in with fear, um, fear of, of losing position, losing authority. So it is that sword between the sexes, as we say, in some of our healing courses, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Lots to think about. Sure. Well, look, I'm, I, my wife turned 50 this year, and we had a, um, a party for her. Um, she just invited a lot of her girlfriends. I was there just to be a, a waiter and give a speech. <laughs> But I said, I mean, and I was honest. I mean, she uh, she saved my life, you yeah. know, in many ways, you know. Yeah. And I've, um, old Rory, my friend, apparently, I don't know anybody you will know, but if you look in Genesis, the the original the um, meaning of Eve or or the helper, or whatever, was actually lifesaver if mm. it was translated. Yeah. So for, I think for me, you know, definitely my wife, I remember the moments where she confronted me and said, you've got to deal with this stuff. Mm. And it changed my life, you know, mm. and constantly. So I'm, I'm very much yeah. for, for, well, we've for on, that, you know. We've on um, common yeah. ground there. Eh? That's, yeah. This is good. I, I was thinking about this. I left my scriptures open here in, in Romans 8. He says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. You know, it's, for as many as are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. And the more we're open to, to his leading, the more we, we're going to find this new humanity emerging. And, you know, um, I'm sure you guys experience this, uh, where we have to come back to God and receive more of the spirit. Because uh, as Dwight Moody says when he was asked, why do you preach repeated in feelings? He says, because I leak, you know. Yeah. And we need to come back and say, Lord, fill me again. And, and they did that in, in Acts, Acts 2. They're full of the Spirit. Acts 4, they come back having had some persecution. And they say, Lord, do again. Mm-hmm. And he does. He pours mm-hmm. his Spirit out. And this is what, they, what it says in Acts 4, 31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all full of the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. It's always going to be that bold proclamation of the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Not the Word of our traditions. Mm-hmm. The Word of God. Mm-hmm. And, of course, like Peter, sometimes we learn slowly, eh? Um, and I know this uh, stance we are taking, and uh, we don't take it as an optional position. It is a, a clear position that um, 
misogyny is out, misandry is out, the sword between the sexes is not godly. Yeah. We need to lay this down, and everything that contributes to gender-based violence is evil. It must be called as such, and this is not optional for us, and we need to declare that boldly because that's what the Spirit is saying to the church in this, in this century, yeah. and we will see radical shifts, and I know the fundamentalists and conservative people will think we are selling out to humanism when we say that, yeah. but quite the contrary. Out of their fear of of uh, what they perceive as humanism, they're actually going to sidestep and miss an, another absolute in Scripture. This is not an optional extra. Yeah. Um, I recently went through, because I was on the commission in the vineyard that looked at this issue, and as I went through more reading about it, and I'm very, very sure that this is what God wants us to know from right from, from Genesis. Um, we created different but equal, and he always intended that we should walk in a unity yeah. and, uh, and a mutual respect in terms of gender, you know? Sure. I'm uh, more excited being on this bus, David, mm. you know, and I think um, <coughs> obviously this, that you, your passion for this is more than just this congregation. So uh, I think it's for us, you know, it's the, as you steer this bus in a direction yeah. which is probably going to be mm. quite bumpy right. Yeah. So much more, it's important that the people on the bus mm. are with you, support you, and, and you know, be an example you know, mm. of, of that mm. playing out, you know, mm. that we don't speak one thing and, and we don't, you know, so while you're out there breaking ground, you know, in that direction, how can we then play it out here, you know, in yeah. a community and show people, you know? Right. And not just, for, not just the church, but show it to the world because mm -hmm. the world is so much in need. You know, society is, mm -hmm. they don't know. I mean, they, you know, they're looking for the truth, you know. Yeah. And, and so we've got such a responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, um, to grow this kingdom. Yeah, but he's giving, us, he's giving us three tools. One is, is this, eh? His word, eh? I've got mine as well today. You've got yours here. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the word. We've got the spirit being imparted to us. And we've got the invitation to robust fellowship and conversation with each other. There's at least three things that will help us. Eh? Yeah. So I want to uh, um, come on up here. Come in, uh, and um, Sean, come and get us ready to do some worship. Yeah. Um, and that's something we've been blessed in the vineyard. Uh, the Father seeks those who worship in spirit and in truth. And as we seek um, to walk in the leading of the spirit, we're going to find ourselves increasingly open to, to his changing power in our lives and, and us uh, experiencing a, a, a fresh unity, which as we've often commented on, we, we have to keep working at being diligent to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And uh, the times of things that you say irritate me, and I'm sure I've said the same to irritate you, but we stayed on board in the bus, as, as you say. And um, so it's been a bus that's enabled us to grow, hey? And we're looking forward to seeing, hey, I don't want people joining this church and staying immature, hey? We, we want to grow up in Jesus, eh? And uh, help us to grow up before we grow old too, eh? Amen. You can't say amen, you can say amen, no, you know, it's just how it works. But uh, God does want us to grow up. Eh? And you know, what we have to grow up about is, is our, our broken things that we often just say, well, that's just who I am. But maybe it's not who you're meant to be. If any man is in Christ, is a new creation. And we're part of a new humanity. Let's reach for that. We are the people who have tasted of the powers of the age to come. And we're fetching it into the present. God invited us to live heaven on earth. Years ago, one of our Easter camp slogans, I think my brother coined it, Steve coined it about uh, uh, heaven on earth. And we had t-shirts made about heaven on earth. Um, but that's what we are. We are a heavenly people living it on earth. And you remind me again and again to make sure we do it on earth. I mean, Eliko went to school and many, many things that you do uh, because you've turned your back on religion and turned your back on compassion, turned your face towards compassion, which uh, results in these things. So I honor your, the sincerity and authenticity of your, your journey, Vota. Thanks for that. I hope this is helpful to you guys. Does anybody have any questions you'd like to quickly on, uh, throw at us before Shanae takes us into the throne room and worship you? Is this making sense to you guys? Eh? The kind of thing we're talking about, the new humanity, empowered by the Spirit, Grounded in the Word, uh, enjoying, so I'm giving you three things, His Word, His Spirit, and really healthy, robust fellowship that doesn't push things under the carpet, that engages, and I say, Voter, I don't like it when you say that, and you say to me, Dave, I, I don't like it when you talk about that or this, and how about this view, and we can have really healthy interchange uh, in a way that brings us into fresh growth, eh? Does that make sense, guys? Amen. Why don't we stand together and begin to worship the Lord who has given us all this. Thanks, Voter, appreciate it, eh?
You're the King, Lord. Jesus reigns in this place. Jesus reigns in this place. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns in this place. Yes, you reign. Jesus reigns in this place. Jesus reigns in this place. Jesus reigns. Jesus reigns in this place. You reign. So if anyone's got a word you just feel like you need to share, even if you want to just go up to someone and just share it personally, just, just be open, just be listening, just be hearing what the Spirit wants to say. I just want to encourage us tonight. I just really sense His presence and that He's going to speak to us. Maybe you want to just pray for someone, just feel led to, to just use this time to do that. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Jesus, you reign in this place. And when you reign, Lord, everything that's not of you has to flee, Lord. We pray that fear will be banished, Lord. Anxiety, depression, Lord. Feelings of guilt and shame and condemnation leaves in Jesus' name, Lord. We just thank you for the power of your name tonight, Lord. Thank you for the power of your name.
there's anybody that is in pain, physical pain, you need healing. We were just watching John Wimber's story last night, and he said, where the presence of God is, his power is there as well. If you need healing tonight, why don't you just lift your hand and let's just ask a few people to gather around you and let's just trust the Lord. He's so able. He's so able. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Anyone else? Can a couple of people just get around Landa, please, and just lay hands and pray for her? Yeah, thank you, Lord, for your power. We thank you for your presence. Thank you that you sent your word and healed our diseases. Sent your word, Lord. I'll just sing that song again. Thank you, 
Jesus, thank you. Now we pray, Lord, as Vota said earlier, Lord, that as Monday morning comes, Lord, we'll take your presence with us into our workplace, into our schools, our varsities, Lord, our classrooms. We'll take you with us. We don't just leave you behind here tonight. We pray for this new humanity, this victory that you've called us into, Lord, this new life, this calling out of the world, separating, Lord, not living the same as the world, being different. Would you help us? Would you help us? In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Just remember the coffee shop will be open, and if you're visiting with us for the first time, please come and grab a cappuccino. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks, team. That was wonderful. Thanks, Dave and Vota. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you to those online as well uh, that uh, joined us online. We appreciate you having us with you, uh, having you with us. And if you need to get in contact with us, our details are on our Facebook page. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here.